Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be solving the problem, remove duplicates from the sorted array. Before moving on to the problem, if you guys are new to our channel, please, please, please do consider subscribing to our channel. So the problem states that you are given a sorted array nums and you need to remove the duplicates, yes, in place such that the each element appears only once and return the new length. Now there is a lot of stuff written over here. Let me explain you what is written over here. So basically you will be given an array and at the end of the function, you need to return the length of the number of unique elements. Now you will be given a sorted array. And if you see the number of unique elements over here is three. So at the end of the program, you need to return this length three. And before returning this three, you need to make sure that this array is modified. And how will you modify this? Basically what you need to do is, you need to place all the unique elements at the front, like one, comma two, comma three. So three elements are placed at the front. And after this, you know that there are still four places left in the array. Now in these four places, you can place anything you want, doesn't matter. What they want is you need to remove duplicates and make sure that all the unique elements comes in front. So the program wants you to return the length three. So whenever you return the length three, they iterate for the length three and check if the length three contains all the unique elements and it has removed duplicates or not. So it is only checking for this portion. It's not gonna check for this portion. So that is what the problem states. So if you are in an interview and this problem comes up to you, the naive solution that you're gonna tell to the interviewer will be using a hash set to solve this problem. What you're gonna tell the interviewer is, you're gonna declare a hash set which is initially empty. And what you do is, you iterate for every element. So at the first you have one, so you insert it into the hash set. After that you move to the next one. And when you insert it into the hash set, the one doesn't get inserted because you know, any set doesn't store duplicate. Next time when you go to two and you insert it into the set, it stores two. Next time when you go to two, it doesn't inserts it into the set. Again, you go to two, it doesn't inserts it into the set because it's a duplicate. Next time when you go to three, it inserts it into the set. Next time when you go to three, it's a duplicate. So it doesn't inserts it into the set. So basically, you can say that the number of unique elements from the set is three by getting the set dot size. So that's your length that you're going to return. But before that, you need to make sure that these three elements are placed at the front. Now you know that the set stores element in the ascending order. So when you will pick up the first element, that's one, you can simply take it out and place it over here. After that, you get the next element that is this two. You take it out and place it over here. After that, you're going to take this three out and you're going to place it over here. So once you have placed all the elements of the set in the first three positions, your task is done. Now, it doesn't matter what you place over here. What matters is all the three unique elements should be placed in the front. So you have your size. You can simply return it. So if I talk about the time complexity of this brute force approach, it's going to be a bigo of n log n for the first time when you insert all the elements into the hash set because n for traversing in the array and log n for inserting into the set and another bigo of n to basically take the elements out of the set and place it at the array. Now imagine if the array doesn't have duplicates. So you have to place all the elements from the set into the array. So that's going to take a bigo of n. And if you talk about the space complexity, the space complexity that you are using is a bigo of n because you're storing all the elements of the array in a hash set. So that's about the brute force approach. So before moving to the next part of the video, I'd like to share some free resources with you. So I'll be leaving the link in the description. You can go to the link and check out all these free classes on different topics like backtracking, segment tree, hashing, dynamic programming, game theory, binary trees, and every other topic that you can see over here. You can also find tracks related to beginner, intermediate, advanced. And remember, these classes are taken by top educators. So these classes are free. So please do go check out these free classes because they are really, really in an organized way. And if at any moment they do ask you for a referral code, please do use Take You Forward to watch all these free classes and it's absolutely free.
So you can also check out the new batch of Unacademy that's starting on January 8th, that is the Conquest 2021, where they will be teaching you all the topics from the beginner level to the advanced level in a duration of 52 weeks. So you can pause the video and check out all the topics that they will be teaching week-wise over here. So just in case after watching the free classes and checking out the syllabus of the batches if you feel like getting a subscription you can check out their subscriptions and if you are willing to enroll you can use the coupon code take you forward where you will be getting an additional 10% discount. So guys uh, go check it out if you feel like taking it then only take or else you can watch out all the free resources that's available on the internet. So the optimal approach will be to use the two pointer approach. So what we do is. So initially I keep the pointer i at 1 and we have one more pointer j. So our j pointer is over here. So we see that i and j are having same values. So they're not different. So I need someone different than 1. So what I do is I move the j pointer to a place ahead. So at this point we see that the value at the index i and the value at index j are different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this i pointer to one step ahead and after that I'm going to take this 2 and place it over here. That's a very simple step. I'm just going to do an a of i equal to a of j and that's going to place it. Right after that, since we have placed 2, our next task is to find out an element which is not 2. So again we move j to the next guy. So over here we compare if the value at j and the value at i are different or not. So we see that both of them are 2. So we haven't found an element which is different than 2. So we move our j to next 2. Now over here we again find a 2. So again that's not similar and we see 2 and 2 are equal. So what we do is we move this j over here. So this is the moment when we see that this 2 and this 3 are different. So we have to take this 3 and place it over here. So for that what we do is we move the i pointer one step to this. And right after that, we can do a, a of i equal to a of j. That will make sure that a 3 is placed over here. Right after that, we move j. Again, we try to find out an element which is different than 3. So 3 is same. So we again move it. So the moment we move it, we see that j is crossing the boundary. And since it crosses the boundary, we stop. So the moment the j pointer crosses, I can say I have my answer. So currently i is standing at the second index yes i is standing at the second index and we have made sure that the modified array will look something like this 1 2 3 2 2 3 3 and as we know what matters is the first three elements so how do we get the number of elements i is currently standing at 0 1 2 second index so if we simply return i plus 1 we can get the number of unique elements and that's gonna be my answer. So if I talk about the time complexity, it's nothing but a big O of n because we are just iterating over the array elements. And if you talk about the space complexity, it's a simple big O of n because we are doing the modifications in the given array only. So right after this, let's discuss the C++ as well as the Java solution to this problem. So in the Java solution, you can see that you are given the nums array so what we do is initially we check if the array is null or empty we simply return a zero because we will not be having any unique elements. Right after that we keep a pointer at i equal to zero and we keep a pointer j equal to one if you remember and we simply move on j till it doesn't cross the boundary and what we check is if nums of j is not equal to nums of i because we are looking for an element which is different. And the moment we get someone who is different, what we do is we move i pointer. And right after that, it's very simple. We just initialize nums of i to nums of j such that the element goes over there. Once the entire iteration is over, we can simply return i plus 1 because it is the number of unique elements. So now let's discuss the C++ solution. So in the C++ solution, you can see that you are given the vector nums. So at the first step, we check if the nums dot size is 0. That means if, the, if you are given an empty vector, let's return 0 because it's not going to have any unique elements. Right after that, I have the first pointer i at the first index that is 0. And we have a second pointer that is j initialized to 1. And we know that j will keep on moving till it doesn't cross the boundary. So what 
are we looking for? We are looking for an element which is different than nums of i. So we simply check if nums of j is not equal to nums of i. If that is, that means it's an element which is different. So what we do is we move the i point out to i plus plus and then we simply initialize nums of i to nums of j. That means we just take that element of j and put it in nums of i. So once you have done the entire iteration, I can say that we have removed the duplicate and made sure that all the unique elements are right at the front. So we know that the number of unique elements will be i plus 1. So we're going to return i plus 1 as the answer. So guys, I hope you have understood the entire approach along with the code. So if you did, please make sure you like this video. And if you're new to our channel, please, please, please do consider subscribing to our channel. With that said, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in the next video where we will be solving the next problem from the SDC.